Hi, and welcome to Laura's View and Tarot 2. Today's date is Friday, October 5th, 2023. And I am pleased to introduce someone to you who has a lot of beautiful information you might find useful. If you're interested in the Ascension process and personal development, and without further fanfare, here is Diamond. Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, it's so good to be here. Really happy to connect. Oh, I'm glad you're here too. So Diamond, tell me where people can find you if they want to um, listen to some of the things you talk about. Yeah, we're we're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so Diamond No. So my last name is N-O, diamondno.com. It's got all of our socials. So I have a personal TikTok that's public. Um you know, there's a lot of stuff on there. It's pretty basic, but it's there. We have YouTube, we've got Instagram, we've got Facebook, we're, we're just starting Rumble. So appreciate that app a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've had to go to that for some of my content too. So it's nice uh -huh. to have. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been watching some of your TikTok videos and you just had a really wonderful way of explaining the Ascension process and how to grow and I know that you haven't been too active on the YouTube platform. So I'll be able to help you a little there and mm -hmm. um, uh, just take a few minutes and talk to people, however you feel yeah. you know, led. Okay. Let's get into a conversation for sure. So it's funny, like divine purpose for me started in the nineties and being like, I'm a generational psychic. I've got all these gifts and then beautifully, the insane 3D corporate world somehow gave me skill sets in order to do what I do. So we've got a huge platform where we launch mentors into the world and we help people really move through that ascension process with ease and not the, the wild dark night of the soul and all the heavy stuff, right? You're going to have those moments, but they're just moments. Um, and then social media, we actually didn't start that till last year. So it hasn't been a requirement for us. Uh, we've just been working off of referral We're global. We love what we do. But then I felt this like ache, you know, how the, the law of inspired action to like get my butt on you on TikTok. So I was like, all right, let's go for it. And I started jumping out there and showing, just sharing like these little tips and bits on how we move through this process. I know when I started my journey and I know for a lot of us, I felt very isolated and alone. I felt confused. There's so much information out there that it's overwhelming. And it's like, what do I listen to? <laughs> like, where's the discernment? Like, how do I understand my intuition? How do I understand what's right for me? And the, it's an overwhelm, right? So moving through that journey, it's really learning to listen to what feels good for you. Not what, if it's putting you into fear, if it's putting you into stress, if it's putting you into, I'm not getting there, I'm not doing it, then you're in the wrong lane. This, this journey is so beautiful, isn't it? Like when you really tap into it and you trust this process, it can be so divine and so beautiful and so liberating and so exciting. There's moments we have the universal law of rhythm. So this is kind of like the main thing that I love to do. Well, there's a lot of things I love to teach, but let's get into the very basics. Um, there's 12 universal laws. And the mistake that I see with the awakening process or the ascension process is people trying to focus on manifesting. Like, how do I get it in my life? How do I bring this in my life? Like five steps to manifesting. Here I go. And they think they've got it figured out. But there's 12 universal laws. The universal law of attraction is just one of the laws. So that was where I was getting it wrong for years. I would sit on my couch and I'd visualize and I'd do the vision board and I'd do all the things. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. And I get these little glimpses, but I'd never actually fully arrive. So then through my education system, you know, studying quantum physics and how that all interacts with the spiritual process, the 12 universal laws is what came into my life. And so understanding that it's so funny. My lip, can you see it quivering right now? My lip just started yeah. vibrating like mad. It's so funny. It's like the energy I can feel because time doesn't exist. So I can feel who's going to be watching this. And it's like, I can feel the hidden tears. Like my lip is starting to quiver. The joys of being an empath. 
right? You feel everything. Yeah. So my liver is actually quivering because I can feel someone really wanting to like break through and the pain and the ache of this process before we really get it. So I'm just going to deal with this for a few minutes here. Um, so with manifesting and bringing things into your life and going through this journey, we have to understand how to use all 12 universal laws. You're always manifesting. So the universal law of vibration is everything's energy. You are energy. Everything is energy. Your beliefs, the conversation, the story you're telling yourself, the story you tell yourself when you look in the mirror, the story you tell yourself about your journey, your words, all of those things are a vibration. And the law of attraction is simply just responding to that vibration continuously. So in order to move into your highest timeline, remove guilt and shame. You are never, ever, ever doing it wrong. You will have moments where you feel like it's not working. Your meditations aren't happening. You're going to feel moments of emotion purging through the body because we've got these crazy meat suits that have had trauma. You're going to have dark moments. And in those moments, if you keep telling yourself the universal law of rhythm is like a coiled spring, there's a little down and then a little up and then a little down and then a little up. So we're going to have these little downs, these pauses to get really clear on self, to get really clear on what wants to be healed within me in order for me to lift my vibration, to move into a, a thriving vibration instead of a fear-based vibration, right? And we're a, we're a whole planet of survival. Like you're born into low vibration. You grow in a mother's womb and I haven't met very many mothers that are fully healed yet. So you're growing in that vibration. You're growing, being birthed into a planet of survival, a society of survival. And I truly feel in everything and what I love to teach is this is just an evolutionary process. You don't have to, it's not a race. There is no destination. It is a process of moving from survival-based energy into thriving-based energy. So when that's it comes beautiful. to, right? And that's all it really is. Like yeah. we have it in our heads. Like I meet people all the time that are like, okay, I'm going to dedicate all my life to, you know, meditating and doing all these things. And I'm going to push and I'm going to fast track my spiritual awakening and I'm going to arrive and I'm woke as fuck and I'm this. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's an <laughs> evolutionary process. Calm down. It's fine. Right? Like you, a, an old oak tree doesn't compare itself to a seedling. Like there's, there's no, it's just a journey and yeah. it doesn't mean that you're better or yay, I'm woke as fuck. So therefore I'm all of these things. Like that's not what it is. It's an evolutionary process of, can I heal my hidden belief structure that I was taught that I've had for lifetimes? Can I heal that vibration within me? Can I move into a thriving energy of trust, of joy, of gratitude, of love? of surrender, trust that whole journey and move into and put your focus on. And that's what the awakening process is. The awakening process is heal your damn self, heal your limiting exactly. beliefs. Exactly. Right? Like, if you want to be as woke as you can possibly be, and you want to levitate and you want to get to the level where like, I, I can levitate, I can, I can actual project, I can remote view, I can do all these things. It doesn't even matter. Like my life is not like, oh, yay, because of it. It's just a process and unfolding. And if you want to get to that space, it's about healing the vibrations that are holding you back from that. This is a you thing. This is yeah. a, you know, pray to the universe thing. You are the universe. You are right. creator energy. Yes, right? exactly. Exactly. And I think one of the hardest things, and I'm still struggling with it, is to set time aside. Like you said, you know, it's not a race. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you take the time you need because time doesn't exist. So if you, you know, you just, it's like you said, it's a process. It's mm -hmm. a process. And I don't claim with anybody that watches me that I'm, I'm there, you know, I'm just working on the process. Like hopefully everybody else is yeah. and celebrating every time I do take a step forward, you know, in that process, it feels so damn good. <laughs> it does to like lose some attachment to things to mm -hmm. learn to really trust my discernment you know mm -hmm. I had a kind of a unique experience this week it was unique for me um 
in the past, I've had trouble believing my discernment about people. And I had a um, an appointment with someone. And as soon as I saw them, big alarm bells went off. And I still kept the appointment because it had nothing to do, you know, personal safety or anything like that. But I was like, thank you, universe. That This time I didn't tell myself, oh, wait to find out what they're really like. I thought, no, there's something really off about this person. I'm glad I only have to interact with them in a professional manner, you know, something to do with, you know, some mm -hmm. property for just a very brief period of time. And I thought, this is someone I would not be surprised to find out. I'm looking at a glamour that they're into something really strange, awful, weird, and mean. I wouldn't be surprised, but I just loved that I knew I could trust my discernment about that person. That when my hinky meter was going off, it was totally accurate and I shouldn't doubt it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a journey, right? Yeah. And, you know, I've been, my journey started teaching in the late nineties. So I've been doing this, I've been doing this for a bit, a day, you know, and I'm still going through the journey. Yeah. I have these like crazy, beautiful gifts and I ha I'm living the vision that I had back in the nineties, but that doesn't mean that I've arrived. It just means I'm happy. I'm thriving. Would we ever arrive? How no. You know, what is I, there to arrive to? Exactly. I I picture myself at some point just being a being that I even look at some of the things I hear about the conflict between the reptilians and the this and the that and I think I want to move to a place where everything just is. There's no need for power and authority. Mm -hmm. You just are what you are, oh, what you are, that. what you are, you know? Yeah. yeah. Let me talk to that. I love this. I love this so much. I'm so excited right now. Like, so one, you have the ability to do that here on earth. Absolutely. There is nothing that taints my life. There is no drama, no negativity. There's no lack anywhere. I'm selective about what I like look at, you know, like I know right before we started recording, you were like, observe, don't absorb. And that's it. Don't absorb it. It's not yours. Right. But the higher your vibration, it's like a big fire. Low vibration is like dense ice. So just for metaphor, high vibration is fire. So even if I had to interact with someone for a brief amount of time, that was real low, like all in all the dark, whatever, I'm just going to transform their ice. A block of ice cannot touch my fire. It can't work its way in, right? So you can take the pressure off of yourself of, and being an empath. I mean, we're going to get into so much here. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm going into stories. So being an empath, this is my silly analogy. I have this beautiful program called Fully Awaken and Ascend, where I teach the entire awakening process and then the, the universal laws and the quantum entanglement piece behind it and the power 369. It's so, it's so good. And in it, there's two things that I really want to touch on. So what your ego is, because I think that's really confusing for a lot of people. And if that's the only message that you take from listening to me blabber on for however long we're going to go, then that's the message. And then, um, totally lost thought of what the second thing was. So I was talking about the fire. This is what I do. It's gone for half a second. So we'll just go into ego and then we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, so as we go through this evolutionary process, oh, being an empath, being an empath is the best thing that ever happened for my human experience. So one, you are consciousness, you are universal flow. Okay. That's a whole brain warp to get yourself around that. The power doesn't exist outside of you. It's in your cellular structure. Every single one of your cells has what quantum physics calls light. Spirituality calls it um, consciousness, different religions, call it unconditional love, compassion, whatever. It's same vibration. Everything is vibration. So it's in your cells. Then we're coded in this dense belief structure that creates the physical meat suit in our reality and how we see and move through our reality. When you change that vibration, you change the way you see and experience your reality. So this is what we mean by living in different timelines. I can go play in 3d if I want to, but that's not where I reside. So you can sort of shift, right? So being an empath is the ability to fully, unbelievably resonate with someone. 
when I work with a client one-on-one, I can taste what they had for lunch. I can feel the tension in their body. I can feel disharmony. I can feel all of them. And you hear all of this information out there about being an empath is so draining. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Like it's such a powerful gift. And the reason it doesn't drain me is because ready for this fun analogy and all my quirk, I look at it as a bad fart in a room. It's not mine. It's unpleasant. And I'm just going to waft it away. Whereas I see a lot of empaths try to scoop up that fart in a jar and be like, you have no idea how hard this is. Like, this is horrible experiencing this. And then they keep wafting it and putting the lid back on. It is your perception. If you choose to hold on to it, you will. But if it's not yours, it cannot reside within you until you choose to hold on to it. So literally just waft it away. Like, oh, that's not mine. Cool. And anytime I'm feeling uncomfortable, is this mine or is this the collective? Like, mm, and then I just waft it away. And it's all about intention. You don't have to get all wooey about it. You don't have to have a ritual or a ceremony. It's intention. It's vibration. Like, oh, that's not mine. I don't own it anymore. Gone. And yeah. I leave. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so the ego piece, ready for this? Yeah. I'm going to trigger some people here. So as we move through our awakening process, there is So we have heard of 3D, 5D, all of these things, right? So these are timelines. These are vibrational timelines. However, your human body, your meat suit goes through its own dimensional consciousness evolution. So you're born 3D. Yay. There you are. And then you progress through up to eight, nine dimensional consciousness within your body, the physical meat. Fourth dimensional consciousness is the most exciting. The most exciting. This is when we wake up. We're like, oh my gosh, there's angels there's galactic, there's conspiracy, there's, oh, and we get really excited and our gifts start to enhance and they start to, we start to become very in tune with our intuition and our discernment. Then we birth through this birth canal into fifth dimensional consciousness. That birth canal is your dark night of the soul. That's when you realize that everything is co-connected, including your ego. You are always divine spark. This is the one time you get to be this meat suit, this personality. Your ego is responsible for your laughter. Your ego is responsible for your pleasure. Your ego is responsible for enjoying your human body. Mm -hmm. So I like to look at my ego as a wild stallion. If I brought a wild stallion into my home and I ignored it, it's going to kick. It's going to flail. It's going to destroy stuff. It's just going to be wild and it's going to destroy my home. But if I befriend that ego that wild stallion. If I love and honor that stallion and I tame it and every time it goes off into, oh my God, how am I going to pay my bills? Or, oh, I'm not doing this right. Or I don't know if this is the person I'm supposed to be with. Do I, do I go for them? Do I not go for them? Like all the things we do. Every time the ego does that, the stallion, it's just throwing a little hissy fit. It's just being, it's just telling a story of like, I might be afraid right now. And so you just calm it down. Mm-hmm. You're just like, we don't have to do that. It's okay. Let's move back into what brings me joy. And then you can mount the stallion and then you can use your soul compass and you can arrive anywhere you want with like way more ease, but it's not about ego death. Like I see that's, and that's a fourth dimensional consciousness thing. Yeah. That is, that is, you know, you got to have your ego death. You got it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's one reason I don't like TikTok right now. I'm like, oh, yeah, don't do yeah. that. Don't do that. Love it. Honor it. Celebrate it's an it. acceptance and integration, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the ego expresses needs and yeah was in was crucial for survival in 3d but doesn't mean it's without value as part of Mm-mm. consciousness package moving forward it you know? totally like and if, my... when you deny it that's when yeah it's going to kick it's going to you know it's mm-hmm. going to do its yeah. thing you know like well it's what if like... you need me well if i need you i know you're there <laughs> come enjoy this with me you know <laughs> yeah i love my ego she is quirky she likes to, she likes to be a unicorn. Like she's <laughs> happy and it's responsible for my vision. Yeah. It's responsible for my determination. My goal Mine is too. to change a million lives. That's my goal. We're getting pretty darn close. Yeah. My goal is 1 million lives healed. That's what I desire. 1 million lives healing and fully standing in their timeline and co-creating with universal flow. Yeah. And my we ego are in a is, process of co-creation whether mm-hmm. we realize it or not, 
you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So why not create the best possible, the highest, you know, the brightest and lightest, for. you know? Yeah. That's what you're <laughs> yeah. here for. You're here to enjoy all of the things. And yeah. when we look at that evolutionary process, right? So if we are ascending, we are awakening. So is society. So is the way things are governed. So is the expectation on like everything is in an evolutionary process, everything. So yeah, there's a lot of things that we're not comfortable with because we're beyond it. Yeah. It's like walking into a dirty room. Like we don't want to do that, but it's in its own evolutionary process and that can't be rushed. It doesn't need to be rushed. It's inevitable that will arrive, that will get to unity. It's inevitable yeah. that we're, that's, that's the evolutionary process. Like that's what's going to happen. Yeah. It's just a matter of time, but we get so damn impatient because we're like, now, right. Yeah. Well, you know, I had to, to finally realize, you know, I've told people we're all heading towards the light. We're all ascending. We're all growing, but we're doing it at different times. And I've had to kind of detach with some people and go, eventually I'll see you there. Mm-hmm. I'll see you there. We will have that unity. We will, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And since time doesn't exist, well, we will have that unity and just let it go. Mm -hmm. Right now we don't. Okay. But in the meantime, I still have work to do on myself and places to go and people to love and, you know, things to do and lots to learn. Yeah. Yeah. We are a species of impatience and that's very 3D, right? It's that comes from, I want now. And in that, I want now we're going because that's wrong. And we, we start to put judgment towards that's wrong. Yeah. Right. There is some, from an ego perspective, there's a whole lot of crap, like, come on guys, let's get it together. However, we are co-creating as a collective. So there's a big hunk of us that are really comfortable with all of that. And so they're holding on and that's okay. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. You literally can evolve past that. You can ascend past it and live a life that, and it doesn't have to be like, there is no way my bougie ass will ever not have hydro. Like I'm not living off the land. Like I love you guys and wit, like all the power to you. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I love plumbing and I love electricity. Like I'm good, but you can evolve into a state of existence where it doesn't even come into your radar. Yeah. Like it doesn't. The only way it does is if you choose to go look at it. Yeah. No, you can live in total freedom. You have that potential. And it's like our impatience factor is going to hold you back because it's a low vibe. And And impatience, again, is closely tied with those concepts of time. Mm -hmm. If you Mm -hmm. set that aside, you can set the impatience aside too. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where they're at. They'll get there. That's Mm -hmm. where they're at. They'll get there. You know, Mm -hmm. I I find those phrases really, as I interact with people, that that's just something I just tell myself quite often. Well, that's where they're at. I can acknowledge it without owning it or needing to change mm-hmm. it. You know, it just is what it is, you know, and mm-hmm. I know people sometimes really hate that phrase, but it is, there's a lot it's of It's the law of relativity. That. Yeah. It's the universal law of relativity it literally yeah. is. It is what it is. And it's yeah. perfect. Yeah. They're where they're again, at right now and they'll move as they choose, you know, mm-hmm. and our free will too. Some people are choosing not to move. Some people choose not to mm-hmm. learn or change. And if that's, I have a little, I had a hard time grasping that because that's not how I do things. But once I did, yeah. it's like, okay, that's their choice. So you mm-hmm. honor the choice, but you don't have to join the choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I have an analogy of what I refer to the sea of consciousness, but it's a, it's a beautiful analogy. It's going to take up way too much time, but it it explains, okay, then let's go. (laughs) (laughs) You got time. I got time. Um, so it explains the universal law of divine oneness, but it also explains exactly what you're talking about. The refusal, right? We all have those people that want to talk about negativity, that want to judge it, that want to point fingers, that want to fight for whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So in the universal, so in the sea of consciousness, this came through in a meditation where I was like pulled up into way beyond earth, looking down at humanity and the colors of lights and the density and the, and the brightness and the freedom and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden they just dropped me 
And so I'm free falling from who knows where. And then I hit the depths of the ocean. And as I hit the ocean and I went to the bottom of the ocean, um, I sat there and I was like, oh, I'm submerged. What is this lesson? So then I get pulled to the shoreline for half a second. And my guides are like, we have a question for you. And I'm like, okay, so I'm going to ask the question. Here's this beautiful sea in front of you. That is the sea of consciousness. That is source. Okay. So if I have a glass and I scoop a cup of that and I hold it above, is this source? And I was like, no, I had to think for a minute. Cause I was like, well, mm, mm, mm. my ego was like oh, brain warp. But if you scoop up that cup and it's in a cup, is that source? And most people believe that when we die, the cup empties and goes back to source and that the glass is your vessel. But the truth is, deal with my quirky. I know things are going to not be accurate. And when I explain this one, I get people are like, that's not how glass is made. Just deal with me for a minute for the analogy sake. Okay. So let's say that there's a tremendous amount of heat coming from the sun and the sand, and it's all mixing with the water. Eventually it's going to crystallize. And then more particles are going to join that glass. And then like that that chunk that's developing and it's going to develop and develop and develop and develop and develop. So let's say it becomes a shell. Okay. All of a sudden there's a shell in the ocean that is made from all of the particles and the heat and all of the things and the abrasion of the ocean, the hard times, the shell is developed. And so now we've got all these shells as they're growing, as they're developing at the same time, they're disintegrating. So little particles are falling off and then going over and connecting to another particle that builds something else. And at the same time, it's being developed, it's disintegrating and going to something else. So the shell that I identify as, there's bits of my shell in you. There's bits of your shell in me. There's bits of my shell in all the things that are around me. So in fact, I am burst from the sea and how the sea moves. And the things, everything is birthed together in union and rebirthed at the same time. So you have multiple timelines because you are multiple things. So that's the sea of consciousness. Everything is just in continuous, endless. There is no beginning. There is no end. I'm constantly in creation. You are constantly in creation. We are in constant flow of creation and disintegration, right? Well, our so energy can be transformed but not destroyed. Yeah. yeah. It can never be destroyed. Right. There's no right. such thing as destroy. That's a, yeah. as a human thing. That's a human word, right? Yeah. So when it comes to third dimensional individuals or low vibrational individuals who are stuck, I look at the sea of consciousness and I'm like, okay, so on the surface, you may reside. There's some pollution up there. You may be somewhere in the middle where it's nice and cozy. You may be way down in the depths, but you're still in the sea of consciousness. And then there might be some that go over and get stuck in the mud on the shoreline. And they're like, oh no, I can't possibly, I can't possibly leave this mud and be out there. No, all the pollution, it's a trap. Look at what they're doing to us. No, no, the middle ground, it's not warm enough. Look what they're doing to us. Oh, it's too dark at the bottom. Look at what, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. I have to stay here in the mud and it's so hard. You have no idea how hard it is over here in the mud. So I'm just going to be over here. And what can you do? Right? So here's what you do. You go, wow, that's really, that must be so challenging for you. And you swim a little closer and you're like, I don't know how you're going to get unstuck. And you swim a little back and you swim a little closer. You're like, yeah, no, I totally get how hard that is for you. Like what a wild ride. Like you are stuck in that mud. Wow. Yeah. I was too. Yeah. I, mm, I feel so bad for you. Like how horrible. Oh, your back still hurts. Oh my gosh. Like, you don't have enough money. Wow. Like that's so hard for you. And you swim back a little bit and you swim forward and you swim back and you swim forward and you swim back. And eventually they're going to go, wait a minute. You're not stuck. Yeah, no, I know. I, I left that a little bit ago. And they're like, oh, and then one day they might be brave enough to get unstuck. But if you swim up and you go, the reason you're stuck is because you're stuck there. And they're like, no, you don't know how hard it is. Oh no, but you're choosing to be stuck, but you don't know how hard it is. The biggest thing that humanity requires in our human meat suit is to be 
heard, to be seen, to be valued for wherever we're at. So if you just keep swimming, that's all you got to do. Keep yeah. swimming, go explore, yeah. go explore what brings you joy. Yeah. And then swim back up and check in and be like, no, oh, it's rough, eh? Oh, it's really <laughs> terrible. And then you just swim. Yeah. Then you go back and check. And you don't have to hang out there. You can visit or you can choose to just go off and do your thing. You don't have to stay there. Yeah. Yeah. But if those shells all started growing at the same time I did and we're all pieces of each other, how would I judge? And I know, like, let me tell you back in the mid nineties, oh, this girl was stuck. Like, oh, I like born psychic, born with all my past life memories, my lot of trauma. I'm not gonna talk about that, but a lot of trauma and abandonment, all the things. And I shut down hard in the mid nineties, like closed all the doors, bolted them shut. Like, nope, I'm not going down that path. And then I got stuck. And then it was like the trying striving over and over and over and over and over again for everything, for love, for money, for career, for sole purpose, for health. I ended up with cancer. It was just like, what is going on here? And I chose to stay stuck and I was a victim. I remember my defining moment. There's a few, but I actually I was walking with a cane at one point due to some of the disharmony that I was experiencing in my body. And I took a picture of my cane and I posted it on social media. And I was like, poor me is basically what I was saying. But what I was really saying is, can someone just see me? Can someone just hold space with me? And we don't know how to do that for each other. Instead, we go into mentor role. Here's what you're doing wrong. Have you looked at this conspiracy? This hashtag, this hashtag? Do you have any idea what's going on? How dare you? Did you get the poke? How dare you? Did you not get the poke? How dare you? And we go into pushing each other away. And that's the opposite of our evolutionary process. And then the news and media loves to loves to offer it to us. It's like, here, let me spoon feed it to you. And most of humanity takes the bait. They're like, oh, what a good meal. Let's talk about this for another hour. Yeah. 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 So if someone was going to listen to our conversation, mm -hmm. hopefully a hopefully. lot of someone's will. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What is your deepest desire for what they come away with? Mm. Multifaceted. Your ego's not a bad thing, so don't do that. But more so, you're divinely perfect right where you are. You are so perfect. And I can promise you, I work with thousands of people. I promise you are here to thrive. It is your birthright. And I promise you will find your way. It's just choice. Don't force it. Don't rush it. Don't blame yourself. Don't think that you're messing up. You are 100% here to master what's in front of you. And you will. Yeah. You will cross that finish line and you will move into thriving if you choose to believe it. So don't shame yourself. Don't guilt yourself. Don't put yourself down. And don't compare yourself. No, never. No. There's, there's no such thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally, I think we can see people that you inspire me to build on this part of myself. That's fine. But just feeling, well, I'll never be worthwhile because look where they're at and look how long it took me to get where mm -hmm. I'm at. Those are useless mind mm -hmm. traps we can fall into. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the thing. We, we are born from, like, I am a huge, I'm hugely connected into starseed stuff, right? So I think that we're all different variants of different experiences and we've had different past life experiences and in your evolutionary process, each life you're here to master something over and over and over and over. And we just keep mastering and mastering and mastering. So if I got dropped on this planet a hundred thousand years before you did, how does that make me better? I did the hard work and that has been my path. My path has been I'll do it the hard way. So I know how to shorten the curve for you. <laughs> like, I know what not to do really, really good at that. And it so like it's me. not, yeah, like I, I totally did it the hard way, all of it. And I did it alone and I did it solo, but that's my driving force. It's like, I don't want anyone else to do that. Right. So you can't compare if you're here to experience unconditional romantic love, and I'm here to experience 
um, let's say financial flow. We're on different paths. We're on different journeys. And you're here to master the human experience. So it isn't a game. The thing is, is you are the universe. You are universal flow. You already have everything that you need inside you. So how can you compare? Because you are the same light I am. You are the same consciousness that I am. The only thing that is in the way is the trauma, the wrong, the limiting, wrong is the wrong word, but the beliefs that are limiting you that you're not worthy. The beliefs yeah. that are limiting you that you're doing it wrong. You're not doing it wrong. The only thing you're doing wrong is thinking that you're doing it wrong. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Exactly. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So you can't compare. That's it. Yeah. Because the moment you go, I'm doing it right. The yeah. universal algorithm, there's up and down. Oh, look, I'm having a down. That means I'm about to level up. And if you put your focus there, bam. Right. So you can't, you can't compare. And it's in human nature. I mean, that's way to participate in what society has taught us, right? Like, oh, I'm going to compare. If you if go you to the gym for the first time. Okay. So I would walk into a gym and I've got a lot of extra weight and not very fit. And, you know, do you turn around and go out just because you see someone that's 30 years younger and been, you know, has, has not had some of the issues? And no, you know, you just, mm -hmm. you go in and, and you do your best. And hopefully mm -hmm. it's a supportive environment because I've, I've been in gyms like that where they're mm -hmm. just, I'm just glad you're here. You know, you're not sitting on the couch. I'm glad you're mm -hmm. here. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and start where you're at and keep going, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. It's like, it's like school. You're born into kindergarten and you go through lessons. And so, and then you go to university and then you graduate and then you do the job and then you get good at the job and then you get a promotion at the job. So someone just starting university, just going, oh my God, I'm waking up. What? Yeah. And someone who's been doing it like since the nineties or whatever, I don't know. Like, yeah, I went through university. I went and got the job. I got the promotion. I'm over here doing this for work. I know how to get here. Do you want some support? This is not a comparison thing. Yeah. Whatsoever. Yeah. Whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. well, I thank you so much for sharing some of your wisdom with uh, my viewers and uh, joining me today. It's been such a pleasure to talk with you, Diamond. It's been such a pleasure to talk with you too, darling. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, I hope we do this again sometime, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad our our oneness got in the same sphere. <laughs> sure did. We, we collided pretty hard. So <laughs> yeah, well, I'm yeah. going to uh, thank everyone for being part of this today. And as always, wish you love and light and everything bright. And Diamond, if you'd like to say goodbye, then I'll stop the video. Love you tremendously. Keep shining. <laughs>